going to 1407 Gray Malkin Lane. This is the living memory of the X-Men. Don't let anyone tell you different. Wolverine, third of four. Wo Weapons of War, part four. Written by Ben Percy with Juan Jose Rip as the artist. And this probably is Ben Percy's longest mini arc. <laughs> because... We jump right into where where we were. Maverick and Wolverine are in nor in or the Northern Atlantic Ocean, and Jeff Barrister and a couple of fighter jets are closing in on them. It's like a it's like a uh, George R. R. Martin novel, except you know Percy won't stop for like. 13 year, thirteen plus years and say, it's coming! It's coming! Yes, I am a Game of Thrones fan. Okay. So, just as I said, we jump right off from there. Um, Baronster, you know, he has his boys lighted up, and they're being shot at. Like, Maverick and Wolverine are just kind of like, they're cursing at each other. But trying to figure out what's going on. I, I really like it. Wolverine said it earlier in the, the run that Maverick is the best buddy around when there's money to be made, bodies, uh, you know, people, people need to go, or there's alcohol involved. You don't leave him with your wife and know that as soon as things it's gonna end. He's gonna end up screwing you over. So don't keep you don't keep him along very long. Yeah, it's a it's like a fling. You say what's up, keep it brief. <laughs> so you know, after that quick misunderstanding, you know, Baron Surf discovers that Wolverine and Maverick are they're all on the same side. This part kind of gets me because, yes, I understand that, you know, collateral damage, but I feel bad for the helicopter guy who was flying with Berenster because we don't know what happened to him. He's dead. Like, he, you know, you know, he dead. Nameless fighter pilot goes, goes down in the history, long history of lateral damage of people who we never see again. <sighs> <sighs> Wolverine Maverick managed to escape, but Jeff Bannister did not. It looks like he's dead. Maverick gets uh, Wolverine out of there, and they're in a bar, and they're talking about what's going on. And then until and things were good, they were just chilling until a Wolverine clone holding what looks like a bomb. It's not a bomb. It was a message from Beast. Greetings, Logan. I would like to extend a dinner invitation to you. I can promise that the wine, food, and atmosphere will be excellent, and the conversation absurdly polite. There will only be two of us present. I know you will agree to come, and I know you will be civil, and I know you won't attempt any sort of trickery or tomfoolery because I have quite that insurance policy and other, other than Jeff Berenster. You heard me right. Agent Berenster did not drown during our last encounter. I managed to save him. And yes, I know very well you're scoffing at the word save, but it's true. He would have drowned if not for me. Whether he continues to live... Well, that is up to you. If he die, if you don't come to dinner, he dies. If you or one of your associates tries anything, he dies. The time and GPS coordinates for our spicy little rendezvous will accompany this message. See you soon, old friend. And remember, when you're dealing with smart, don't bother trying anything stupid. Whoa! That is real big dick energy. <laughs> He's pulling Donald Trump numbers at this point. He's like, that's, 
doesn't mean we still can't. Just because we want to kill each other doesn't mean we can't. We can't have a. We can't break bread. Let's be. And what follows is probably one of the most blatant and disgusting. Uh. Uh, visuals of how Marvel sees intelligence. It's how they see Beast. And I know, and I've been reading that people wait, wait, saying like, oh, um, oh, he's going to go back to his Avengers era Beast, so everything's going to be fine. This is not, like, this is who, he, who he's been the entire time. We need to go back to being the heroic Beast. <clears throat> I'll get to that in a second. So Wolverine and uh, leaves this exchange because because he's because Beast it wants two things. He wants Wolverine to leave him alone, and he'll he, and he'll leave him alone. Just like you do your thing, I do my thing. We both wore her Kokoa, so. And Beast wants two of the clones that Maverick and Wolverine, because he claims they are expensive to make. I don't, I really don't see what's going. What the issue is? He could easily make two more. I don't. I don't get that. But then we've come to, and then we get a data page where Maverick kind of goes into. He find he discovers something. He discovers that Wolverine, the Wolverine clones he has, they're coming, they're they're coming into consciousness, like they don't have a a, a human brain. They have a they have like a totally animalistic brain, and at any point, they're gonna turn on Beast, and Beast doesn't know it. Which then leads us to the next issue, Weapons of Five. Weapons Weapons of X Part Five. <laughs> um I I I all right, I honestly I didn't really like this issue. I mean I'm like it's enjoyable. I like everything in it, but the message they're conveying is kinda scary like you can't be smarter than everybody else you always have to be a clown because apparently a lot of people want beast to be a clown they want him to be the uh the crying clown it's, it's and i don't i don't get that like you could be smart you can be intelligent and do good good stuff and you don't have and you can have a good sense of right and wrong. It's just that Marvel, or in a sense, people, society, uh, have this long notion that if you're smart and you get power, eventually you're going to turn on everyone. Like eventually, like you're not going to care about anybody because you're going to be on such a higher level. That is... Wow, that's a def that's a weird way of like keeping people dumb. It 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 just kind of weirds me out. I'm giving this book. The art is amazing, of course. Uh, I I really am enjoying the story, but I just don't like the message it conveys. So I'm giving this book just out of principle, like this issue. <sighs> I I, di I disagree with it, but it doesn't take away from what how good it is. So I'm giving this like a point seven five. Yeah, I haven't had to do that in a while. So, uh, what do you guys feel like? Hey, I don't I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm tripping about this. Like, what what do you guys think? Tell me. This fourteen oh seven Great Malkin Lane. I'll see you soon.